and welcome to Fire and Rescue New South Wales up at Springwood Fire Station. We're going to be doing one of the uh, open day week demonstrations today. We're going to be doing a side rip on this car, taking the side of the car out as we might do if there was a car accident and there was someone trapped inside. Uh, we've got firefighter Jamie, firefighter Claire, firefighter Ben, station officer Mark and firefighter Richard down the back here. Uh, firefighter Claire here is currently training to become a rescue operator, so she's going to be doing most of the work on the tools today. Please sit back and enjoy, and if you've got any questions, just post them in the comments on the Facebook page and we'll answer them as best we can. At a real car accident, the first thing the firefighters do is check the scene for any dangers, such as power lines or leaking fuel, and also to ensure that there aren't any other victims under or around the car. Next, the firefighters stabilise the vehicle to prevent any movement. This can include applying the handbrake, chocking the wheels and placing blocks under the vehicle. Before we use any hydraulic tools, we need to safely remove the glass from the doors. A Perspex shield is used to protect anyone inside the car, as the glass is broken and removed from the doors. The firefighters are now going to remove the side of the car. There are many different ways this can be done, but for this demonstration, we'll remove the front door, then the rear door, then the B-pillar. The first step is to create a gap between the doors so that we can insert the spreaders. One way of doing this is to crush the centre of the door. There's now enough room to insert the spreaders and force the door open. Firefighter Claire moves the spreaders around until the door latch is forced open. The two primary hydraulic tools we use during motor vehicle extrication are known as shears and spreaders. The whole metro spreaders we're using here can generate over four tonnes of crushing force and over six tonnes of spreading force. Using hydraulic shears, the hinges are then cut off and the door removed completely from the vehicle. These shears have been developed for modern high strength vehicles and can exert over 140 tonnes of cutting force. Moving on to the back door, here's another technique for opening a gap at the back of the door by spreading vertically in the window area. As she did with the front door, Firefighter Claire now forces open the rear door using the spreaders, moving up and down the door until it's forced. And then the door is completely removed from the vehicle. Next, we'll remove the B-pillar, allowing unimpeded access through the side of the car. Shears are used to cut through the top of the B-pillar. We could also cut the bottom of the pillar with the same shears, but for this exercise we're going to use a combi tool, which is capable of cutting, crushing and spreading. First the bottom of the pillar is crushed, then cut through from both sides. The pillar is then removed, leaving just enough of the bottom of the pillar intact in case we need to use it as a base to push the dash forward. Sharp edges are protected with Perspex shields. The final action we're going to show today is called a dash lift. It might be used if somebody's legs or feet are trapped underneath the dashboard. First, we remove the front guard. Then a relief or weakening cut is made in the inner guard using the shears. We then move to the A-pillar, first removing the inner plastic trim to check for airbags or other dangers before also making a relief cut in the top section of the pillar. Moving down to the bottom of the pillar, the shears are then used to make two parallel cuts. The spreaders are then inserted into the gap and opened, forcing the dashboard up and creating space to enable the extrication of anyone trapped. We hope you've enjoyed this brief demonstration. If you've got any questions, please fire away in the comments section below and the firefighters from Springwood will answer them for you.